Good morning, this is Marina Jeffrey. It is the 11th of August, 8.18am. And this is a message for HWL Ebsworth Lawyers in Melbourne uh, in relation to correspondence between myself and your solicitor, Xavier Curlin, from the 4th of August, 2021. In, up until uh, yesterday, 10th of August, 2021, with the subject field, Jeffrey versus ANZ Bank, Outstanding Matters. And the parties that were copied into my initial email to Xavier on the 4th of August, are uh, Simon Crawford, partner for HWL E. Ebsworth Lawyers, and Danielle Solomon, who I believe when I looked her up a while back was involved in a dis uh, in some dispute resolution type capacity, but I haven't personally dealt with or spoken to Danielle to date. And last but not least, uh, Shane Elliott of ANZ Bank, who is the CEO of ANZ Bank. The reason I wanted to record this video uh, before I send my response to the latest email, Xavier, that you sent me on the 10th of August is to give you a visual and audio um, as well as the written correspondence, just because I am conscious of the fact that there are some people that are more visual processes, more audio processes, I myself um, and a more an auditory processor than a visual one. So I find when I listen to content, it impacts me more than if I'm reading something, unless I'm reading it out loud and then it becomes auditory. So I wanted to give you the opportunity to hear my voice, to see me, and hopefully by doing this video recording and sharing what I'm about to share, you'll be able to also feel the energy behind my, my words and the meaning of those words. Now, just for context, and because I may uh, publicly share this video through my social media platforms and elsewhere, I want to provide potential viewers with some background context before I read out my response to your late, uh, your latest uh, email to me on the 10th of August. So, uh, but before I get on to the subject matter at hand, in case uh, some of you are visual processes that are watching this and wondering what in the world is she wearing? I actually work from home. I'm self-employed. So I am still in my robe and it's actually a man's robe because uh, I couldn't find a female <laughs> woman's robe that was long when I was searching for a robe. So just thought I'd address that so you're not distracted from what I'm about to share. Um, so there you go. All right, so let's get to the business at hand. So I'm going to go back to my correspondence with you, Xavier. Uh, Curlin, solicitor for uh, HWL Ebsworth Lawyers in Melbourne in relation to Jeffrey versus ANZ Bank uh, proceedings in the Supreme Court of Victoria, where I'm just going to quickly give other viewers who may be watching this some context. Uh, we've got proceedings in the Supreme Court with ANZ Bank, HWL Ebsworth Lawyers are their legal representatives since October 2019. And um, we, myself and my husband, so Glenn and Marina Jeffrey, we are defendants, but we are also plaintiffs by counterclaim. So there's some cross lawsuits going on. Anyway, I won't bore you with the details. I'm going to get stuck into the correspondence, uh, just so you've got some context of where this particular, particular matter started and the string of correspondence between us. So you'll understand my response. So on the 4th of August, I wrote, Dear Xavier, there is an outstanding matter which needs to be established for the purpose of ensuring we are in a position to plead all relevant and genuine facts in our amended counterclaim. Sophie Soreem, for those um, that are new to this uh, story that's unfolding, Sophie was our uh, dedicated business relationship manager from 2014 through to 2018 um, with ANZ Bank. So Sophie Sureen's LinkedIn profile as of today's date, screenshot below, still shows that she is a current employee of ANZ Bank acting in the role of a business banking manager. This information is inconsistent with the information that the police informant informed us following his discussion with ANZ's 
investigator leading up to the successful prosecution of Sophie Soureem in the Magistrates Court. He informed me that ANZ Bank terminated Sophie's position in the course of the investigation into her criminal and fraudulent conduct. My question to your client is simple. What are the genuine facts surrounding Sophie Soureem's employment status with ANZ Bank? We see no reasonable basis for your client to continue to refuse to answer an unambiguous and simple question which has been asked on many occasions for the sole purpose of establishing the genuine facts in this matter. As this is not the first time I have raised this question with your client, their representatives and the CEO, Shane Elliott, I believe that requesting that your client furnish us, a within, us with a response within two business days is not an unreasonable one. The following day, August the 5th, a response received from Xavier Curlin, solicitor. Dear Marina, as legal proceedings are now on foot, we have informed you on a number of occasions that our client does not wish to engage with you other than in accordance with the rules of the court. Can you please desist from sending emails such as this and comply with the orders that have been made? Having said that, our client has no control over what Miss Sophie Soareen posts on her LinkedIn account. Kind regards, Saviour Curlin, solicitor. What I did um, fail to actually mention in my response to you, Xavier, I understand what you're saying, that your client has no control over Sophie. However, I believe in in a situation where she's been convicted of um, criminal offences and specifically fraud, forging our signatures and getting her boyfriend at the time to falsely attest to witnessing our signatures while we were in Bali. Um, just one of the alleged frauds that she committed, well, no longer alleged given it's been you know, proven in court and she was successfully prosecuted by the police thanks to our efforts, not thanks to your client's efforts. But anyway, that in itself, as you know, is another story. I thought it would be in your client's interest to know that someone perhaps is falsely alleging that they still represent ANZ Bank in the capacity of a business manager. Or in the alternative, is she still employed by ANZ Bank? I don't know. Perhaps she is. Perhaps she's out there committing further systemic fraud on other unsuspecting victims. I don't know because that's a question that you, HWL Ebsworth lawyers in Melbourne, their representatives, their client, ANZ Bank, the corporation, and their non-client, in my view, Shane Elliott, who is not yet a party to the, these proceedings, but I believe soon will be as a second defendant, perhaps then, should he engage your services, he will be your client. Until such time, in my view, he's not until proven otherwise. But let me let me get back to this. What you do with that information or don't do with what I've just added here is up to you and your client. So on Friday the 6th of August, I responded to you. Dear Xavier, in, your, in response to your statement, quote, in accordance with the rules of the court, please advise which specific, quote, rules you are referring to and relying on to support your implication that by asking relevant and reasonable questions, in brackets, which have been asked repeatedly well before your client initiated these proceedings, of your client, of um, or Shane Elliott, who is not yet a party to these proceedings and therefore not your client unless proven otherwise, I am somehow operating outside the rules of the court. See, Xavier, you made a an assertion or let's call it an allegation or a claim, whichever label you choose. So I was asking you specifically, what rules of the court are you alleging that I'm not following? It's a straightforward question in my view and quite specific. I'm not clear why you're not unequivocally clear on the point of my question and hopefully by me jumping onto this video and now conveying this to you in words, it may, may help you understand where I was coming from. So you have responded to me on the 10th of August. Dear Marina, the matters you raise in your below email involve matters that are, are in issue between the parties, having been raised in your and Glenn's defence and counterclaim. Neither we nor our client are obliged to engage with you in relation to these matters, other than in accordance with the rules or any orders of the court. There's the rules again. 
that's not you, Xavier. That was just me. Bad living. Um, we do not act for you. Accordingly, it would be inappropriate to provide you with advice in relation to the court's rules. As we have advised... As we have advised you on many occasions, we recommend you obtain independent legal advice in this matter. Kind regards, Xavier Curlin, solicitor, HWL Ebsworth Lawyers in Melbourne. So before I get into my response, which is the, the crux of this, <laughs> um, I do wish to point out to those who may be viewing this and perhaps Xavier as well, there's a reason that we are unrepresented or self-represented in these proceedings at this time. And it's actually due to the systemic fraud uh, by your client, ANZ Bank, Bank, dating back to 2012, actually, from our very, very first dealings. Um, for those who are not aware, fraud vitiates everything. So in relation to the proceedings your client has brought with respect to 2016 alleged an alleged home loan in 2016. Uh, I don't know how to break it to you, but we never had a lawfully legally binding agreement back in 2012 as the the uh, documents Shane Elliott um, assisted us in getting back in March 2019 well and truly proved beyond a shadow of doubt and well beyond the balance of probability required in civil proceedings. But let's move on. Let's move on. So, my response to you, Xavier, is this. Today's date, and I will attach this video to this email that I'm about to read to you now. Dear Xavier, I refer to your email below dated 10 August 2021. I am well aware of the fact that you do not act for me. I am also aware of the fact that I did not ask you to provide me with, quote, advice in relation to the court's rules, as you incorrectly implied. As the fact that I have not sought legal advice from you has been established, I would appreciate you refrain from providing me with any legal advice in future by way of recommending that I obtain legal advice. As previously advised, I will obtain legal advice if, and when I deem it appropriate to do so. With the utmost respect, I do not base my decisions off unsolic unsolicited recommendations, advice, or the opinions of others, irrespective of their good intentions. I wish to afford you the opportunity to avoid giving rise to the possibility that it may be in HWL Epsworth lawyers representatives best interests to obtain their own legal advice, given the mounting evidence which surfaced throughout our many dealings and interactions from October 2019, which in my view demonstrates without a shadow of doubt and well beyond the balance of probability that HWL Ebsworth lawyers representatives have, one, violated the rules of professional conduct. Two, engaged in criminal acts that reflect adversely on their honesty, trustworthiness or fitness as lawyers. Three, intentionally or recklessly misrepresented facts, which based on the evidence in their possession, they knew were false or should have known to be false, which amounts to deception. Engaged, oh, four, engaged in dishonest and misleading conduct. And five, by engaging in the alleged conduct, they have intentionally, willingly or recklessly aided and abetted their client, their client's representatives and their client CEO, Shane Elliott, to conceal and cover up systemic, fraudulent and criminal conduct, demonstrating a blatant and or reckless disregard for the law and our rights. Then there's some, I believe it might be Latin legal jargon, legalese. So I can't pronounce, well, I'm going to give it a go. Fraus es celer fraudem. <laughs> I got the fraudem bit. Which means, in English or layman's terms, it is a fraud to conceal a fraud. The above points 
form part of a separate email communication which I drafted yesterday. However, in light of your comments in your latest email, I now deem it more appropriate to set out the allegations here. Just want to make sure everyone's clear that anything I've stated here, I haven't stated as a matter of fact, even though I can prove it's a matter of fact. I've been very careful to not make allegations that could, to, to not state something as a fact, which later can bring a defamation lawsuit um, against me. So yeah, I cover my rear, if you get my meaning. Back to, I'm almost done. So in order to avoid being drawn into unnecessary distractions, I will not entertain or partake in what I deem to be works of fiction, hearsay, or a form of delusion nor will I make any claims, assertions, or allegations as though they are a matter of fact without possessing both the willingness and the capacity to back them up with irrefutable facts and evidence. I would appreciate your client and their legal representatives reciprocate in kind moving forward and focus on the overarching purpose of dispute resolution that is just that is the just, efficient, timely and cost effective resolution of the real issues between the parties under the umbrella of the paramount duty to the court. In, f in, further, co in further consideration of the statement made um, in the paragraph directly above and in order to ensure that we as self-represented litigants are not unfairly disadvantaged throughout these proceedings, I will be serving your client with a notice to admit facts and documents to help all parties narrow the real issues in dispute, in addition to serving Shane Elliott with the affidavit of facts. I trust that you and your client will not be opposed to the fact that the notice to admit facts will set out relevant and material facts pertaining to the CEO's wrongdoings, given you yourself, Xavier, have implied that Shane Elliott is your client. In circ in, uh, in these circumstances, if you are opposed to this, for any reasonable or lawful reason, a clear, detailed and timely explanation in support of any such opposition would be greatly appreciated. Marina Jeffrey, and then it has my uh, business auto signature for Puppy Power. Mind you guys, I'm not going to, I'm not plugging my business. We're out of business, thanks to <laughs> ANZ. So Puppy Power is kind of, yeah die to death, but that's all good. Um, I have many other business opportunities once I finish with uh, ANZ Bank. So uh, there you go. I'll get back to you, Xavier. So um, I really hope this video vlog uh, share helps for us to get on the same page. Perhaps there's been some misunderstandings on your part, because as I mentioned uh, in my opening sentences that, you know, things can get lost in translation. So I, yeah, I hope this is received with the good intentions and um, that I've sent it with. I really don't see any opponent or adversary as an enemy. I believe that everyone has a very good core and that we're all doing the best we can um, with every opportunity and experience that life presents us with. So honestly, I'm actually grateful for every experience and every person that's been a part of this experience due to the, the growth, the, the, the learning um, and the wisdom that I've acquired as well as the skills to be able to inspire and help others who may feel that these banks, these big banks, whether it's ANZ, any other bank or any other organisation for that matter, has any power over you because they don't unless you choose to give them that power. We are all you, me, Xavier, anyone else watching this, we are all equally as powerful as one another. No one is above or below another living man or woman. That's my view. And that's my belief. And I'm going to stick with that because it really feels great when you're aligned with your own values, you know your self-worth, and you give yourself permission to shine, step into your power. Do not compromise for anything or anyone when it comes to your beliefs, your truth, your values, whatever they may be. Honour you first and foremost. 
then go out and help others. I hope this helps someone that may be watching this. Bye for now.